Hey guys, how are we doing? It's uh, Saturday, about 11 o'clock. Went out for a couple hours, putting around, doing some yard selling, and the town next to me had its uh, its town-wide yard sale, and I uh, decided to go out and do a little bit of exploring. And uh, literally, there was one of uh, four or five houses away from me on the way there, and the very first thing I grabbed was that uh, Ryobi looking little weed whacker head, and uh, that comes with a chainsaw attachment. That guy. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's got a fairly decent uh, length pole on it. Uh, you can probably get you up about, uh, probably about nine feet or so. Clipping little limbs and trims. Not quite sure what size it's supposed to be good for, but uh, anyway, I um, don't know if it runs or not or bad fuel. Uh, but I figured the attachment was probably worth that worst case and I, I paid uh, 25 bucks for it. I was asking 25 or offered 20. He said no, it's worth it. So I gave him the 25. Um, so that's that piece. I uh, put it around a little longer and uh, found that little, uh, I think it's a mix of aluminum and steel uh, floor jack. The handle's next to it on the side there. Uh, they're nice for uh, stuff that you got really low to the floor or just something that you want to go carry out to the yard. That doesn't weigh a ridiculous amount of weight, you know. You can walk out and say if I uh, want to go jack up like that bus or something or a trailer, something in the yard or whatnot, and it's not to a place where you can wheel it, that probably weighs about 15 pounds, whereas the my regular floor jack is probably more like 80 pounds, 85 pounds, and uh, it gets to be a bit much. Uh, helmets. Yeah, it was a different yard sale, and uh, he said all these helmets are out of date. And um, he goes, I can't sell them, so you can have them for free. And I never realized helmets had a shelf life that you had to not use them by anymore. But uh, apparently, that's what he said uh, is the condition. So uh, I went and grabbed them, and uh, they look fairly decent. And that was a little foggy, but uh, I believe one of them even comes with a, a new shield, which is that guy right there. That might be that. And then uh, there's these two. One's a large and one's an extra large. What's that have to say? <laughs> All right. Guess he had an issue in the past. Who knows? And then that one of those had a uh, face shield that went with it, which is that guy right down there, which is new, which can kind of come off and give you a replacement of the visor. And I found this new old stock. It looks brand new. A track player. Yeah, you like buying a track player. But when you got old cars, sometimes um, uh, it's good to put them in there for uh, keeping the nostalgic part of it. And it's, I believe it said made in Japan somewhere on it. Not China. Made in Japan. So that, since you're offering me that, is that two bucks? Sure, sure take it. So uh, I'll grab that and I'll put that in my stash. And then to the bigger pieces of power equipment, both of these were towards the end of yard sale, which is probably about 10 o'clock. Well, I had about quarter to eight and it was done by about 10 o'clock. And um, this is probably about 9.45 was a, um, I'm not sure, is this a wheel horse or is it a um, Troy built? I'm gonna say it's one of the original Troy builts. Most of those stickers are gone on it. But uh, one of the machines that are built like a tank. Um, it sat out in his backyard probably for a long time. But I found with these, uh, generally they're pretty, uh, they're pretty bulletproof. Uh, more than likely it's just going to have uh, engine issues as far as carb and possibly spark if it has points in it. It probably looks like it's old enough to have points in it. And next to that was a Honda push mower. He said he just doesn't use anymore. And because uh, he was using it and uh, he actually forgets why he stopped using it or he got a bigger mower or rider or some, something like that. Some story he told me. So that will probably have a bad fuel system in it too. So there's that guy and that guy. You can't see it on the tag. That says five bucks and the handlebars on this one says ten. I see you take ten for the pair. He said sure. I said sure. We threw them in my truck and now I own them. So I figure we can kind of go and do a uh, 
cold, cold start and uh, go through them. There's your issue there. That's got some bad fuel lines. No primer bulb on that. Ugh. Yeah, that guy ain't gonna work very well, is it? <laughs> so, um, we'll go through them and see what we get. And uh, that uh, is probably about the, the best deal of them all. Being the tiller, even though that thing's old, ancient, and antique, that up and running is 200 bucks. Um, and generally, it'll be an older person that buys it because uh, they're in the know. They, they know what's good and what's crap as far as stuff uh, lasting. And uh, that would be one of the machines. And again, that all depends on how the condition of that motor is. So uh, let me uh, get these off the truck and we'll start uh, uh, dissecting them. All right, so I figured I'd go from like guesstimation of easiest to hardest. And I think the easiest would probably be the Honda because it's the newest of the bunch. And uh, we'll see what we got. So I figure what we'll do is uh, we'll pull the plug out and uh, we'll see if it has spark. Yeah, if it has spark, we'll we'll move on to um, dump a little bit of fuel in it and just make sure it fires and doesn't rod knock and all that kind of stuff. So, let's see what we get. Plug looks a little on the rich side like it was running with the choke on. Which probably meant it had a dirty carburetor and they had to run it with the choke on to get it to run halfway decent. So I'm not sure if you're in a visual of that. Now I'm gonna put a big roach clip, big roach clip on the uh, lever. Dead man, so to speak. Let's see if we can grab the rope right here. And so, got plenty of spark. He's up a tad, kick you up a little bit. So, I'm going to take it and uh, we'll dribble a little bit of uh, two stroke fuel right in the hole. And I'm hoping that when I give it a tug, it just goes broom and dies. Roman dies and doesn't make funky noises anyway. Not gonna bother tightening the plug because it's gonna come right back out anyway. Yeah. And hopefully it doesn't vibrate you guys over so you fall over. I was expecting to blow a little bit of oil when they first kind of go uh, from sitting. It looks like uh, we got a critter's nest probably in this one too, judging by the debris that blew out of it. Yeah, I see some crap back in there. So uh, I'm gonna go uh, move forward. We'll see if we're getting into the carburetor, pulling the float ball off, see what that looks like. And also we'll pop that, uh, that top cover off and uh, evict the uh, critters from their uh, old home. We said we uh, pull that float ball off together. But first, um, a little, let's we'll do a little dusting beforehand. Just to try to keep some of the cruddies out of there, you know. Dripping something. Yeah. Looks like gas. Float ball is kind of heavily pitted. If you guys have seen that. But not terrible. It smells bad though. It does not smell good at all. I always forget to put gloves on. So I would say. Probably just get away with uh, cleaning the carb on the machine. Yeah, yes and no. No, it's got some stalactites on it. If you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. 
I mean by stalactites is the uh, this kind of cruddy stuff right here. So you know it's gonna run. It seems like it moves okay. The float. So yeah, why don't we uh, dig in a little further? See if we can get that carb off of there. And uh, give it a proper washing. I don't see too much more debris up in the in the top. Could have been where the machine was. Just stored it. See some down here. And I gotta go answer my phone. But I got that popped off. I figured I'd try to show you. Hopefully. You see the inside of that jet right there is uh, the crud. I'm talking about so fuel would have to get sucked up right up the center of that uh, brass screw and as you can see it uh, looks like to me it's completely plugged so it definitely needed to uh, come apart and get cleaned so um, no tools were required from where I was the two screws are already out of it I just kind of popped the front tin away from it and uh, the heat shield is still there and you kind of see it so I took the fuel line off and, and pretty much pulled the front away to break the front gasket and then twisted it up and the two linkages uh, were able to come off of it. Uh, they fight you a little bit, but uh, that's the issue with those. So I'm going to go again and uh, dissect this carb and uh, we're going to let this soak for uh, a bit. All right, so I got that main jet out of there, but it's a couple little things I just wanted to show. Uh, I'm going to show you take it apart because it just takes too long, but uh, this is um, the air fuel mix. And it has a stop on it. This is pressed on after they set the carb at the factory. It only allows you a very small window to tweak it from there to there. Um, so my fix for this is I actually have to cut this right here right off to get it so that I can unscrew this um, mix screw. And then um, this is the idle stop screw right here. This has to come out. And then below that where you see that Phillips, that is another jet. I believe it's idle jet. Um, I believe this is the idle jet passage down in through here. Main jet, idle jet. And uh, it's good to kind of blow out through there and clean out that system too. So that has to come out and that has to come out of there to uh, uh, get a good cleaning. So I'm going to do that off camera, but I uh, just want you to get the idea of what's happening. And we're back. So I ended up taking them apart. just want to show a couple of things. Hopefully it shows up. Uh, the camera kind of wants to focus on what's behind it. Um, so I'm gonna back up a little bit. Uh, there's that, that was the idle stop screw and there was that, uh, there's actually a screw in the jet is down below. I don't know if you guys could pick up on it, but there's a, a pinhole in there. So that's where you kind of want to blow your, uh, your carb cleaner through and then your compressed air through. And again, that goes through a passage in here and then there's a hole from here into here. Uh, sometimes there's a little plug. Yeah, here's the little plug on it, on this one. Um, Anyway, so there's a there's a casting hole that goes in between like that, and what happens is here's your float ball, your float, your fuel level is apparently this high. You can tell by the stain on this one. So it draws fuel in through this hole, meters it through the jet, and then uh, there's a vacuum. And the carburetor internally causes a vacuum to draw that fuel up, and uh, you know, you fine tune how much that uh, gets by you know jetting and whatnot. Uh, anyway. Uh, so there's a main jet and an idle jet. The idle jet, um, the main shuts off pretty much. It's not doing anything um, at an idle speed, and the fuel is kind of coming, kind of, kind of, kind of coming up, coming through here and being trickled up. And uh, you can kind of fine tune how much it gets to get the, the mix just right so it idles uh, smoothly. Now, um, when you so. If that's clogged, it won't idle, and it causes another problem, which is um, it'll want to hunt. And what I mean by hunting is the, and when you're not putting a load on it, and when the motor revs and dies, revs and dies, revs and dies, and um, that's a good indication that uh, your idle circuit is clogged because um, although it, it won't have anything at an idle, it also contributes to the main jet. So when it's running, at full throttle and under a load, fuel is going up the center, but it's also being redirected and using the idle circuit too. So when you lose the idle circuit, now the mix is off on the main circuit. So it's running too lean and it causes some other problems. So it, that's why it's important to make sure you get this idle circuit cleaned out. I don't know if that was too much information or not. Uh, also, I'll show you one other thing. 
I went to go take that uh, that jet that I was talking about off and of course they made it so that I believe if you screwed with it it would shear itself right off so I tried hitting it with a pair of wire cutters I was trying to nip this off because I was too lazy to get the Dremel out but I had to go get the Dremel out anyways because again I don't know the camera's picking it up but uh, I just had to slot the head of it so now it now has a, uh, a regular screw head on the end of the jet there's the jet so all that stuff's gonna go into a bowl, uh, a carb cleaner, and we're gonna go with that soak, and then I think I'm gonna go to a cruise night and I'll pick this up at a later date. And I got a few more minutes before I leave, so I figure we'll knock a few more things out. Uh, one of them is gonna be uh, changing oil in this thing. And uh, they do have plugs on the bottom of the motor, but essentially, if the carburetor is opposite of the um, oil drain, you pretty much flip them on its side. In this case, the carburetor is not even on it, so it doesn't matter at all. But I just generally just pull that right out of there. Like that. And while that's draining, I'll come around the back side. And I'll deal with the bottom of the mower deck. Okay, assess the blade. I want to look at the distance between there and there. And I'm going to spin the blade around again. And look at that same distance. I want to make sure that that distance is repeating. If one sits further out than the other, then you know that blade's got a good bend to it. Uh, they all should have a little bit of a twist on the back side of them. That creates the vacuum that's supposed to be there. I know this blade kind of looks cruddy, but it's actually not in bad shape at all. The last half inch, the last 10% of the blade does 90% of the work. Because you figure as you're cutting grass, that's the very first thing that sees the grass. It will be this edge unless you're doing you know 100 miles an hour so what i kind of like to do is actually just go in here with a grinder uh right on the machine and uh just kind of give that edge a tweak and uh clean it up so i'll grab a grinder right now deal with that and i'll probably get myself a putty knife and knock off some of this crap while the oil is coming out let's go sharpen some blades shall we i just got a grinder with a flapper disc on it this one's what 40 grit yeah 40 grit um, I'll hit the outside edge of them just to kind of knock them flat. Uh, you, the bevel is all supposed to be on the back side, not the front side. So uh, let's uh, have a. That's really it. It doesn't take much to, uh, you know, this one was in nice shape, so it really wasn't that bad of a deal. But, uh, you know, don't worry about balancing. You, you're just tweaking it. You're not worrying about the balance so much. But if you have big gouges and chunks taken out of it, then, uh, yeah, I kind of go do that part. And the other thing is, don't be stupid and start the lawnmower by spinning the blade around and have it go past the fire cycle. So uh, make sure that uh, you have the plug wire off, then you're not uh, making yourself a little hand guillotine, you know what I mean? All right, let me go get a scraper, clean up that deck a little bit. That's yeah, a little better. Not going crazy. I literally spent about uh, two minutes just hitting it with a scraper and knocking off the heavy stuff. I'm not looking for, uh, you know, we're not painting this thing. Um, again, just keeping in mind what it is. It's a $5 lawnmower that you're going to put out front for 80 bucks and get 70 bucks for it. So it's not like you're not doing a restoration. So uh, got that cleaned up. I'm going to go flip it back over and uh, we'll go flare up with oil. All right, let's uh, beat a dead horse to death. Is that the saying? Anyway, oil, Honda. Stick it in, pull it out, and check it. Do not screw it in. That's how you want to check the level on it. Most Hondas, anyway. Uh, generally, they have a decal kind of telling you that. Also, but some don't. So if you see that stick, that's kind of the setup that's on them. Yeah, so it's probably like uh, 20 hours later, something like that. And uh, through those parts in my uh, parts washer. It's a ultrasonic cleaner. It's in the off position right now, but um, it is soaking or soaked itself in uh, sea foam. I have not come to a uh, conclusion whether I like that or not. I keep trying different things. I want to see what does and does not work. So I'm trying different things. I've tried lemon. 
of stuff. I'm not sure if it did much for that tarry. It seemed like it wipes right off though. Anyway, as I said, I haven't formed an opinion on that yet, so let me go uh, wash that stuff up. At some point, I'll do a I'll do a review of cleaners. But let's get this car back together and back, get it back on the machine and see uh, how it responds. All right, all back together. Gas is on. Do a full throttle. Intro. Here we get. I still have to adjust that um, air fuel mix on the uh, idle side circuit and we'll see if we can get rid of some of that uh, oscillation. But either that or that idle circuit is clogged and it's doing exactly what I just said as, uh, earlier with uh, that getting that surging in there and that circuit is just not doing what it should be doing. So uh, we'll see. Uh, go from there. Alright, so I've taken that carburetor apart twice on that machine and uh, what I'm afraid of is the idle circuit is shot in it. Right now it's on choke. You hear it kind of uh, running fairly smooth. If I come off the choke, you'll see it, hear it start hunting. So that's what I'm dealing with. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the carbs just do not come back. Uh, you can soak them all you want, but that little passage gets clogged. Uh, I tried adjusting the air fuel mix on the idle circuit and it makes no difference whatsoever. So that's a very good indication that that circuit is clogged. Um, what I'm going to go try and do now to circumvent the wheel is to take the main jet that's in there and try opening its size a little bit larger to see if it can help compensate for uh, the lack of fuel that it's getting. See if I can just kind of tweak it, get it into a window where it runs halfway decent without uh, replacing the carburetor. All right, so I decided to do a little bit of surgery, but I figured I'd show one thing first. This is a um, pin drill bit set, needle set, and uh, let's see if it shows up as I'm dropping them right now. Uh, hold on one second. What it has is a scale on the bottom side. Let me uh, close it. It'll fall out. There we go. Got a scale on the bottom side right here, and it goes anywhere from uh, I think 40 to 79, 61 to 80. Sorry, on this scale, 61 to 80, and the different size drill bits. And the lid has a little hole in it right there. You slide it to the one that you want, you tip it out, and then that bit comes out. So I've done that, and uh, a little holder that comes with it and here's that drill bit i kept what i kept doing is kept finding one till it got tighter and tighter and tighter till finally i got one that it did not go through and so that's what i have here and i'm going to go open that uh, main bit that main uh jet rather a bit i don't got that in the holder very well let me reset that It's like trying to work with hair. This one's not so bad. Some of the really tiny ones are are really tiny, hence the name. It's wobbling, but good enough. Let's see if we can get that uh, roto rootered its way through. There it goes. So 
now we just opened it up to that size bit to that size hole when I believe it um, it corresponds those numbers correspond with uh, a jet size also if you wanted to look it up that way but we're just going a little bit larger to let a little bit more fuel through it and see if it responds a little bit better so let me go put all that back together and uh, try it again yeah, let's give it another shot it's all back together Crooks on. to make it help much. Well, as you can see, I can't get rid of the uh, oscillation in, in it uh, without that idle circuit. But there is a point where if you run it partial choke, uh, it will, it'll run um, uh, decent enough to go and cut grass. And so it is what it is. Not worth putting a carburetor on it, in my opinion. I'm gonna stick it out front for 60 bucks uh, as is. Again, it runs, cuts, dries, and it's been serviced. And uh, let it go on its way. And uh, it's just the kind of chance you take with uh, Yard sale power equipment you pay for five bucks. Anyway, hey guys, thanks for watching, comment, subscribing. Catch you later. And I stuck it out front for about a half hour, put a $60 price tag on it. And uh, someone already came and bought it, told them what the issues with it is, I showed them how it ran, and I didn't have a problem with it. So uh, off to somebody else's yard it goes. Hope it cups many a grass in its future. See ya.